So I haven't changed much in the uh, wording of these. Really, the flood risk hasn't changed much either. Any of these outlooks. Still no big storm since mid-January, but stay tuned. There's one on the way. Uh, we have not seen significant increases in snow or snow water contents way since back in January 18th, 19th time period. So we're still running that half to three quarters of an inch below normal for the uh, January through March period, at least. And mild conditions have persisted. We did get some early thawing processes going on, but those have frozen up again. Uh, last night, we were seeing some thawing again, uh, and we'll speak to that. The bad news is, of course, that the risk for significant flooding is still very high across the basin. And those soils are still very, very wet, and uh, we're still expected to see significant amounts of runoff uh, from the existing snowpack and the prospects for this late thaw that is coming up. Uh, we do have climate outlooks that are still not showing any clear signals for wet, dry, or normal conditions in the long run. But in the short run, they're showing for a return to colder and wetter conditions here uh, through the near term. So again, this spring, our risk levels are still running high, possibly in that top 10, maybe even top five flood territory for some locations around this basin. And this is the update. The really only significant change to colors on this map is that we've added the minor flood risk category up there in Roseau. And uh, otherwise, most of the risk categories have stayed the same, as well as those main risk numbers between the 25th and 75th percentile that we like to point out. So again, not significant changes going on there overall. Uh, I'll speak a little bit to things that are going on in the South Basin and uh, points north. So again, since September, uh, very wet conditions, wettest period on record through September and November. So that was the highest overall, as well as the water year or the year from January through December for 2019. I did want to point out though, um, looking at snowfall, one thing, if I add October into the mix, so the right, the left-hand picture shows from October through March, and you'll notice that big bullseye over Nelson County uh, moving toward Devil's Lake, and that relates to that record snowfall event that occurred in October of 2019. If we ignore October, because that snow melted, if we acto ignore October and just look from November through March, we'll see that, well, there's a a bit of a snow drought that's occurring in the far uh, northeast part of North Dakota, far northwest Minnesota, and also a little bit of a snow drought down in uh, the far southern part of the basin with the area right through the central corridor uh, near normal and above normal at the 100 to 125th, even 150th percentile right through the central part of the basin. So again, how do you want to look at that? Well, a lot of that moisture from October is still available as runoff potential. Uh, clearly, the snow melt is occurring and some of that uh, snow in the south basin and the northeast part of the basins uh, has been reduced. So we are seeing that reduction in the snow cover overall, but there's still moisture coming out of that and available in the ditches and the streams and moving. Uh, I say in the ditches and in the streams, but looking at the survey here a couple of days ago and driving through those areas, realizing that those ditches are still largely frozen over, those streams and rivers are all still frozen over. There's not open water flow occurring at this time. The soil moisture rankings have dropped just slightly uh, across the northern tier states, but we're still looking at our 99th percentile for the vast uh, majority of the Red River Basin, uh, down to the 95th percentile, uh, in far northeast North Dakota, but that's still very wet soil overall for this time of the year. The accumulated precipitation, this is just, again, the same type of graphic I've been showing going back to September 1st, and you can see that four to eight inches above normal precipitation, largely through that September, October time frame, but a little uh, leaning into November, December as well. By the numbers, uh, the bottom chart for Grand Fork shows that we're still running in first place uh, for moisture overall since September 1st until now. Uh, Fargo has been steadily dropping down. It started out uh, in about second place. Uh, last outlook, we were down to fifth place in Fargo. Now we're down to ninth place. So again, just because we're getting very little precipitation, uh, now going seven, eight weeks, um, we are 
steadily dropping down through those through those years. Still very wet soil, but not as much precipitation in the southern part of the basin overall. And so that does have some impact on flood outlooks. General, the uh, flow at in these rivers and currently those that are at high levels but frozen over now uh, are again at the 90th or greater and in a lot of cases the 99th percentile for flow. So those first two ingredients, again, the fall moisture and the base stream flow very high and uh, highest leading into this winter and into the spring snow melt. The frost depths, uh, the only change I've made is our winter snowpack is now near to above normal. It was running above normal because we got a whole winter's worth of snow uh, by the time we reached mid-January, but now we're, we're uh, some parts of the basin have not uh, exceeded that average amount. So the far south and the far northern parts of the basin are just running near normal. As well, the snow water equivalent in that is still high. And uh, again, we've had that full winter's normal value uh, sitting here since mid-January. And there's a map uh, just showing in the background some of these snow depth, but there's the frost depths that are still showing around the area. Highly variable. There's a lot of zero frost depths that are showing up in the southern basin from Fargo south and southeast, as well as areas of frost of 6 to 24 inches showing up in there. So highly variable frost depths still, uh, mainly through the central part of the basin, 10 to 30 inches deep, uh, even a 49 inch deep showing up there near Adams. Again, highly variable snow depth, depending on when that snow hit and how deep it has been. The snow depth analysis, uh, looking in more detail as of March 11th, you can see that there's zero to eight inches across that far southern part of the basin. Uh, some fields showing 60 to 70% open, uh, others at 30% open, but uh, there's still moisture that is in the ditches, uh, still moving, well, frozen, but trying to move off the landscape. Still not a much, much in the way of runoff occurring anywhere uh, at this point. But most of that, and I say most of that has been compressing since our January 23rd outlook. There's only been slight additions into there. So at Fargo and Grand Forks, you see the seven and 11 inch depths that are occurring, and it's basically still holding nearly all of the water that it had early on in that snowpack. A little bit has been moving out of the system. Uh, in some cases, a half an inch or more of the water has moved out, but we're still holding it in the skin layer of the soil as I tried to describe. Um, looking at Fargo and Grand Forks, uh, two and a half to 2.8, uh, pushing three inches of water in the snowpack between the two locations. So mostly in that central part of the basin, two and a half to three and a half inches overall, maybe the four to four and a half inches is a little further into the Minnesota uh, area there, but uh, still snow water available for runoff uh, and more possible. This is just a reflection on where we were last year at this time. Uh, noticing that February of 2019 and early March, that February was the snowiest February on record. Early March continued with very heavy snow. So we had a lot of base snowpack at this time of the year last year. We did not have the wet soils underneath it. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so now what is our snow water that's in the river model. If you look at the larger image there, that's uh, what the River River Forecast Center was using. If you look at those coloring, uh, that's seven, the uh, light green to the very light blue shades are, are the near normal tercile, the 40th, 50th, 60th to 70th percentiles in there. As you get into the darker blues, that's still in the 70th and 80th percentile, we don't have much except right up by the Red Lakes that's in the 90th to 100th uh, percentiles. And that's a change. The lower image, the smaller image shows how we were sitting uh, here at uh, the 24th of February. So again, the overall snow water equivalent and how it ranks for this time of the year is showing in that graphic. Um, much of that water that has been melting off is sitting in ditch networks right now. Uh, some of it, I say, in the skin layer of the soil, meaning it's not yet soaked deeply into the soil. It's it's mm -hmm. sitting there, uh, still available for runoff as we melt, as we warm up here in the coming weeks. 
So what's next? Um, the spring thaw cycle, the heavy spring rains, that's something that looms on us now. Since we are not expecting our temperature regime uh, to get our spring flood going here in the next week or two, uh, we are now pushing our risk later and later into the season. So we start becoming more susceptible to that risk of a heavy spring rain as we get into April. For the week here uh, today through Thursday, we are looking at a winter storm coming into the area and giving us the potential for a quarter to a half an inch of precipitation across the area. Most of that again is coming in from late Sunday, excuse me, late Saturday into Sunday, early Monday morning. And uh, again, the track of that storm somewhat variable. We are expecting heaviest snow into the central and northern part of the Red River Basin. Uh, but again, stay tuned. That could move around a bit here over the next few days. I did not include the picture for precipitation that occurred this morning. So if you look at the southern part of the basin, um, areas near Fargo and south, there are areas that were getting a tenth of an inch, 15 hundredths to 20, 23 hundredths of an inch of light rain uh, that moved through that this morning. So again, not expecting that with the weekend storm. So the Southern Basin could be less overall from that storm. But if you add that in, uh, pretty much most of the basin between this morning through next Thursday, quarter of an inch to half an inch of, of moisture. The week two, so that's the eight to 14 day forecast uh, issued yesterday, or valid, excuse me, now, but issued yesterday, late yesterday, showing very cold temperatures, or at least colder than normal across much of the Northern Plains states and near normal for precipitation. So again, with that turn to colder conditions, um, right now, a normal high temperature in the Fargo-Moorhead area would be just at 32, 33 degrees. Uh, in the Grand Forks area, just at 31, 32 degrees. So overall, we would just be normal to see temperatures reaching a high at the freezing point and low is still below freezing. So with that below normal temperature forecast in there for the next uh, week to two weeks, we are going to struggle to get above freezing uh, over that time period and should have our nighttime temperatures mainly below freezing. There will be a little bit of a warm up here as we get into next Tuesday, Wednesday, and that could see temperatures above freezing in the basin. And again, the risk for getting a nighttime temperature above freezing would mainly be just across the far Southern basin uh, sometime in the middle part of next week. But overall, we're gonna be seeing a, a very slow melt cycle right now. Uh, this week and next. And no clear climate signals again as we head into the springtime. Uh, most of the longer range models are tending to keep us a bit on the cool side now and wetter side, but still nothing very strong uh, showing up in any of the signals. So with that, the prospects for being a delayed thaw and a late runoff cycle looms large. So if we'd have talked about this last week, I'd have been optimistic. I would have said, gee, things are warming up, things are starting to move, and maybe we'll see uh, big water starting to flow uh, through the latter part of March. Uh, this week's idea say, no, it's, uh, everything's cooled down a bit, and now we're looking at uh, onset of big water would have to be late March, more likely into early April. So keep paying attention to that, but uh, likely not seeing anything here uh, significant for thaw and runoff in the next week or two. There's the flood risk by category. Again, as we talked about, uh, just bumped Rozo up into the minor flood risk category there at the 50% range. Uh, overall, uh, the range is not changing much across the basin. These are old maps here, so I'm gonna bump out of these and get to this if we can. Let's see if my mouse is gonna behave. Let's get down here. Um, I want uh, to, again, point out this is our probabilistic forecast um, outlook system here that we've developed, our probabilistic flood outlook summary. There we go, PFOS. And uh, I've got the link on the handouts I sent out. You can see this, it's weather.gov slash FGF PFOS. 
that you can go to and look at these. And there's all the river forecast points on there. And I'm just going to point up a few of them here. So on the far south basin, looking at Wapaton and Breckenridge, you can see that here's the 2019 flood crest level, 14.66. Uh, right now, our 50th percentile is showing that coming in somewhat below the 2019. So we've been steadily reducing the overall flood threat uh, down in that Wapton Breckenridge as again, the snow content not being that high and also some of the thawing that's been going on, reducing the overall flow into there. Let's back out of that and go up a notch. So from there into Hickson, uh, some reductions, but if we look at Abercrombie here coming in on, on the Richland side, you'll see that again, looking at 50%, uh, or excuse me, what actually occurred in 2019 uh, at 21.28 feet, we're coming in just slightly below that uh, here at 20.8 at the 50th percentile uh, showing for this year. That's again, just slightly reduced overall from the last few outlooks. However, we need to keep in mind that in 2019, the timing between what was going coming out of the wild rice basin and what was coming out of Minnesota were somewhat offset by a couple of days. Um, if we look at them being more closely timed to normal, we would still see that in Fargo, it's still coming in very close to the 2019 level, even with those reductions uh, that are coming in from uh, the locations out by Wapton Breckenridge. So again, timing could bring that in and bring it in very close to the 2019 levels. You will see that there is a very low risk of getting much higher than that uh, up at the 2011 levels, uh, ten, just under 10% risk. As we come in here from Valley City, again, 2019 uh, levels came in at 15.16 feet. Uh, right now, the 50% line is showing uh, two almost two and a half feet higher uh, and above the major flood category that has been reduced slightly from the last outlook and part of the reason for the reduction is we have been seeing significant snow melt out toward the harvey area up in the upper part of the the uh, cheyenne river basin so that is removing some potential flow uh, in the overall cheyenne system so that takes some of the pressure uh, off of valley city and the rest of the the Cheyenne River Valley. But we are gonna still see significant flow piling up and backwater flow as you get it to Kindred. Uh, again, that's coming in at the 50th percentile, just slightly below the 2019 level. And then as we get, I have to zoom in here again to look up at Harwood, we have, oh, that's the West Fargo version, I'm sorry. Back out here, go a little further and get Harwood up here. And you'll see that we're still looking, that 50th percentile is coming in somewhere uh, slightly above what happened in 2019. And again, just expecting the timing of those to come in a little closer and uh, uh, create that backwater effect. As we get up the Red River, we'll notice that Hendrum coming in very close to the 2019 level as well off the Wild Rice River and the backwaters that occur uh, here, the Wild Rice, Minnesota Wild Rice River and the backwaters occur, that occur as that meets up with the Red Lake or the Red River, excuse me. And at Halstead as well, we see that at 2019, 39 feet, just a bit over, and we're currently at the 50% level, just under 39 feet there. As we get further up, we are going to be pulling more water in again from the Red, Red Lake River system. So into Crookston, the 2019 level, 24.82. Uh, recall that that was uh, quite ice affected as it came through there. So that added a little bit more uh, onto the stage there. Currently the 50th percentile showing right at the major flood stage level there at 23 and a bit into Grand Forks, again, with the timing and possibilities in there. We see in 2019, it came in just under 47 feet, but we are saying that there's the 50 percentile risk is just above 48 feet uh, in Grand Forks. So a little bit uh, more coming in than in 2019. 
and that holds again for a lot of the northern part of the basin itself. Uh, as we get up to Oslo, again, that flood cluster showing in very close to the 2019 levels with a lot of spread expected on the river itself. As we get up to Drayton, there we're now looking at the 50th percentile to come in above the 2019 level. There's a little bit more runoff in the northern part of the basin. Uh, last year it was quite dry, very little runoff during that spring flood. Uh, we did have, for instance, in Hallock, if we call 2019 that high level, that was actually the fall flood, not the spring flood level. So we are looking to come in just below the fall flood level, but above the spring flood. So that's still going to be a substantial amount of water, especially between Hallock now and the Red River, where there will be backwater effects. And then coming into Pembina, we can see that it peaked there at 49 and 0.38 feet in 2019. We are expecting higher flows or higher stage levels uh, coming in this year and above 50, 52 feet. 